best advice I can ever give to any director is to always instill confidence in not just the cast, but the crew. When you're looking at a director, you need to know that they know what they're doing, even if they don't. Here's what I've learned. There is a curiosity. There is a fascination. There is a desire to want to, you know, be a part of this world. They see the after picture. They rarely see the before. What I hope people take away is that this business and living your dream is exhausting and exhilarating at the same time. Today we are doing hair and makeup tests. We are going to make sure that the palette overall as a wardrobe is nice and cohesive. Hi. Hi. Are you recording? I am recording. What do you got to say? Hi. Uh, <laughs> my Sorry. name is... <laughs> my name is Dylan and I'm yeah. playing Adeline. There you go. Oh. You are... I'm Sarah. Hey. She's Emma. playing Emma. Emma. <laughs> I really like directing kids. They're actually some of my favorite collaborators because they come up with things that you're like, I mean, my mind wouldn't have necessarily gone there. So it's figuring out how to marry their impulses with something really natural. Jessica is super nice. She's super cool. <laughs> and she makes you feel comfortable. We get the work done, but it'll be fun. Okay, cool. cool. This film is not in any one time period. It's not in any one place. It is you know, pulling things from different social movements. We start production tomorrow, which is crazy. <laughs> the biggest anxiety right now is just, you know, what living up to all of the expectation. So my rewrite process has been pretty extensive. I think I've done like 10-ish rewrites. There have been moments where I feel a little bit sad, but I also feel excited and feel like there are some other pieces that have come out in this newer version. Look man, writing is rewriting. And it's tough because it takes a while for writers to know when they should stop because you can rewrite a thing for your whole life. Uh, but at some point it stops getting better. <laughs> I just got official word that we closed on my dream case. I just text Sierra that we closed on Dasha, Blanco, and Zuria Dell. I just got this text message. <laughs> Super happy that our director got her dream cast, which like doesn't happen very often, so. I'm low-key about to cry. Um, I was screaming a minute ago, but now I'm finna cry. Yo, we finna kill it, we finna make some magic. Y'all ain't gonna know what to do with this. Lord have mercy. Woo. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. I'm doing this breakdown right now with no air conditioning. <laughs> Postmark might have a in, in memory of Malachi. <laughs> There's been a lot of changes on our project. We literally had to change the script 80 times. Angela's been great. She's been someone that's really like rolled with the punches and tried to accommodate a lot of like the creative changes. You know, there's nothing more brutal than rewriting your script a bunch of times. Ultimately, it's a it's an artist's journey to know when to stop painting. And I hope Malachi landed on something she feels like she can stand by and be proud of. You know, here I am, a, a woman, I'm not trans, and I'm directing a story. So luckily we brought on Quay, um, who is our trans actress, and she's also acting as our consultant. And this is what a lot of people don't think about, is that these trans women who are discriminated against, who are, um, who are killed, who are assaulted, we don't think about the family. We don't think about that there's someone that loves them and will be looking for them. I think what we're doing with Postmark is that we're humanizing um, trans women. It's been really cool because she's been able to let us know, like, what are we trying to say? What are we trying to build? And from there, kind of really make sure that we're holding the integrity of the story overall. Uh, so we just did a little, little test, a uh, camera test for a practical gag that we're doing for some kind of wacky black tears. Uh, I learned what it feels like to have charcoal water kind of shot straight into your eyeball. <laughs> feels successful in my eyes. Found out last night that they used to use charcoal water as a way to clear out your pink eye, so 
to whomever we end up casting as Mara. If you're not, Pink Eye is, is not in your future. Action, action. Erica, what, what just happened? We just locked our apartment location. Our apartment location, which was so hard to find. Yeah, well, one out of 30 is about a black Muslim man uh, wrestling with his definition of what Islam looks like and the conflict that it brings to his family and to his workspace. Obviously, I am not a black Muslim man. I was raised Hindu um, and I'm Indian. For research, I went to the mosque a couple of times and researched uh, morning prayer and kind of learned what the steps of that look like. On set, we're gonna have two script consultants uh, to help us out with that and the actor on the day. Speaking of set, we're gonna be getting into production in a couple of days. It's gonna be kind of crazy. All right, so you're gonna go here. You'll turn to her. She's gonna hand you the bullhorn. She's gonna hand you the bullhorn. Well, I thought I handed it no, to her. No, you hand it to Adeline. Today we're shooting the fat friend. I'm very excited to see Jessica do her thing. She always had a very clear vision and it's so cool to actually see her bring these words to life. It's uh, going very well. The challenge in working with children is the amount of time that we are allowed to shoot. We get nine hours and then we are done and normally you know you're working a 12 hour day and we have another three hours and 11 minutes to go. All right, bye. Bye Jessica. Bye. That's normal. Particularly when I'm visiting sets, I really try to be just, you know, fly on the wall and to make sure everybody's, you know, feeling good and feeling safe and feeling happy. Because you never know what the director's going through when you do show up. Hello. 